time for our big picture discussion. Going into the closing bell, Jeff Kleintop's with us this afternoon, Chief Global Investment Strategist Charles Schwab. Jeff, good afternoon, sir. You've been tracking the cardboard box economy over the last year. It got real ugly, uh, and then it started to recover here. It seems like kind of in line with some of the rest of our recovery. Yeah, I'm excited by what I'm seeing. You know, I, I think a lot of the question of last year was, are we going to get a recession or not? And the truth is, we did get a recession, but it was concentrated in manufacturing and trade, things that go in cardboard boxes. You can just look at the German economy, a very cardboard box focused economy, to see how weak that was. But that has started to turn around. We've seen demand for cardboard boxes, a good leading indicator, tick up now, down, actually rising on a year over year basis for the first time in over a year. We're seeing the same thing in the Global Purchasing Managers Index for Manufacturing tick back to 50.0 in January for the first time uh, in, in 16 months. So we're starting to see some improvement there. And I'm expecting to see this begin to show up in better earnings momentum for those more manufacturing focused economies and sectors. I'd point to industrials as where well. we might start to see some better momentum. I guess I'd just point to one of the biggest names there, GE, to see the solid upward revisions there and solid gains that stock's been making lately as representative of what we might see from the manufacturing sector in 2024. Ah, all right. So maybe a little bounce back. Uh, I imagine China uses a lot of cardboard boxes. Uh, the one time I went there, I saw a lot of those uh, around the market. I'm guessing that they probably have a pretty big role to play in figuring out which direction the chart goes. Yeah, I, you know, I think one of the challenges that China is facing right now is getting those cardboard boxes out. Right now, we're dealing with this supply chain problem. It's not quite like the pandemic, but we know the Suez Canal, the Panama Canal are, are backed up. The number of ships are plummeting coming through those two. And that means longer routes around South America and Africa. And there's actually a chronic shortage right now of container ships. Think about those boxes, the big container units, those big 40-foot equivalent units. We put the cardboard boxes in. There's about 800,000 container unit shortfall in China right now as those factories reopen after the Lunar New Year, they're not going to have a place to put those things. So we're going to start to feel that in the coming months of a real delay, a lag in longer delivery times getting products around the world. Uh, many of those are, are uh, you know, clear, uh, uh, finished, clearly finished goods, but some of them are intermediate goods as well that go into other manufactured products. So we can see some lingering supply chain issues, maybe weighing a little on that on that uh, cardboard box outlook here just in the next month or two. Sounds like the, the shipping um, is kind of the hang up right now, whether it's Middle East or even Panama, too. I mean, it looks like uh, things have just uh, continued to drop off. Uh, I can get the Middle East part uh, with everything that's going on. What's up with the Panama Canal? Yeah, the Panama Canal has a drought situation. You'd think uh -huh. we'd use seawater to move ships through the Panama Canal. We don't. We actually use fresh water, and there's this El Nino, which is particularly severe this year in the drought it's causing in Central America. And the, the result of that is the number of ships, usually around 50, 40 to 50 ships a day, dropping down to about 18 per day here in February. So it's more of a, a weather-related rather than conflict-related bottleneck, but that is causing many ships to have to go all the way around South America. 40% of the world World's cargo traffic goes through the Panama Canal. It's not just moving some things around from the West Coast to the East Coast to the U.S. So it's a really important trade route and one that is also experiencing major delays. Okay, nice. Well, this is why we call it the big picture panel. That's a nice uh, perspective there. Uh, Jeff, the last part of this as it uh, pertains to your look at the global economies and the central bank paths, we saw a uh, pretty light uh English UK CPI inflation overnight this morning I was talking with Ben about whether or not that might kind of change the order of events for who cuts first so it seems like from your analysis maybe it's not the Bank of England I just needed to go a little further east Yeah, that's right. So it looks like the European Central Bank may be first. The market's beginning to expect this. Inflation's consistently come down in Europe. You know, we've seen some disappointments here in the U.S. with how fast inflation's coming down, given the very uh, structural nature of the housing issue right here uh, uh, with regard to, you know, home rental rates just remaining very stubborn. Not true in Europe. Those rates continue to come down. And as a result of that, the market's expecting that despite all central bankers, including those in Europe, say they're going to wait till summer, that may not be the case. They might begin to be been to cut somewhere, maybe in the in the early part of the second quarter, and that would put them ahead of the Fed. Now, that's already starting to show up in currencies, but it may be starting to show up in valuations as well. We've seen the Euro stock 50 index now keeping pace with the S&P 500 so far this year, and that's good news for better momentum in those European equities. Maybe they'll see those cuts sooner.
All right. Uh, well, there's going to be some jealousy here at home if other folks get to start cutting before we do. But I guess we got to remember it's because we're strong. And we're good. Jeff Kleinsoff, thank you very much for your analysis. Always great. Nice way to end out the day. Chief Global Investment Strategy.